Today, a violent video game is ten a penny. An armoured muscle man blowing a demon's pulp out the back of its own skull with a shotgun full of hate and hot lead is not the headline grabber it once was. In fact, it's hard to imagine something like Doom still causing controversy almost 30 years after release. But that's why I want to tell you the strange story of Thatcher's tech base, a Doom mod that managed to get nationwide attention in 2022 and proved that some demons just won't stay dead. In September 2020, Jim Purvis saw two things. One was a YouTube video where Tim Rogers of Action Button fame dares to say, I dare say you can't say you've played Doom, much less played all of Doom, if you haven't waded into the modding community. The other was a tweet about seeking out Margaret Thatcher in hell. Later that month, Jim Purvis began working on his first ever Doom mod, which he named My Cool Map 01.wad, and 24 hours later renamed it Thatcher's Tech Base .wad. How difficult was it to learn how to make a Doom mod? Um, it's honestly not that difficult. I think there's been about 25 years of people um, doing incredible work from the bottom of their hearts <laughs> out of love for Doom. Um, there's really great tools out there. It, if, you, if you can build something in Mario Maker or something like that, you can build something in Doom. It really is that straightforward. As well as watching and reading guides on how to make Doom wads, Jim, now the lead creative director of 3D, Doom Daddy Digital, ingested several documentaries and films about or set during Thatcher's premiership from 1979 to 1990. The posters and graffiti seen in the game are all taken straight from real life, but when it came to the enemy sprite work, the first of several contributors were approached. The art was done by a guy called uh, Rafael Batista. I did most of the simple pictures, but when it came time to put like a wig and a jacket on uh, the Cyber Thatcher, uh, that was totally beyond my artistic abilities. I needed like a true visionary. As the months went by and the tech base expanded, what began as a mess about in Doom map building started to feel like quite an involved project. Now that the game is getting longer, it's clear that it needs music and there truly is only one man for the job. Enter Barry Topping. Um, it's important to note that Jim is very into role play, so when he sent me the initial contact email, it was as if he was a stranger that I'd never met, and he was soliciting me for a soundtrack to his forthcoming blockbuster Thatcher's Tech Base. At the point that I joined Thatcher's Tech Base, the only music that was in there was a MIDI of Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO, so... And did it fit? It fits in a way. I've played that version and it fits in a way, but I think by that point Jim had decided that he needed some actual music to, you know, fill it out. Because this is the thing about Thatcher's Tech Base, it's one giant level. And I feel, listening to my own music, I'm like, okay, I think we filled it out alright, but listen to Party Rock Anthem for 20 of the most difficult minutes of video game you've ever played. It might have had some negative effects on people, so. When I first started writing music at college, it was all we were all just using MIDI anyway. So I was I was writing thrash metal tunes with MIDI sound sets since like 2003 or something. So yeah, it was like an old pair of jeans for me. Honestly, I was just like, yes, let's do it. So. An old pair of very, very massive <laughs> yeah, yeah. jeans with baggies. Uh, acid washed baggies with uh, wallet chains. I had uh, everywhere. Uh, there was a guy in my school who had a pair of baggies with like flaming dice on the front and they were so, <laughs> so cool. I'm from just like a pretty normal working class Scottish background, like my dad, my uncles, my granddads all worked in the pit, which I should say is the mines for non-Scots. And like my dad worked in British Leyland as well, which was like a partly nationalised like British thing that made tons of cars, and made tractors and stuff like that. And like when all that industry kind of was like removed in the early 80s and like all the you know all the 
Thatcher stuff, all the union stuff. Like my family were all, you know, they had to live through that. What's kind of wild is like the British Leyland factory where my dad used to work. Like my house is built on where that factory used to be. So like I wrote all the Thatcher tech based music and like the ghost of an old like nineteen eighties like <laughs> British motor factory, which is kind of funny. So yeah, but yeah, you no, had the ghosts of people in hard hats putting their hands on your shoulders, <laughs> like more Guiding more the- pinch harmonics. Son, there was absolutely no way I was gonna half ass a Doom mod, a soundtrack for a Doom mod where you kill Margaret Thatcher. Like the minute the minute that the minute like the, the God Save the Queen part was down was recorded, it's like this is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Bang. Take that Britain. <laughs> yeah. It was just so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Now that both the game and its soundtrack were becoming works that both Purvis and Topping wanted to share with people beyond their friends on Twitter, it was time to promote it. Wanting only the best in the business, Jim enlisted Richie Morgan to make a trailer that would tell the world that Maggie Thatcher was attempting to escape hell and only we could send her back there. The only thing the trailer was missing was a voice for the Baroness. Uh, Leila Bersons, who worked on Hades. I was playing that game while working on Thatcher's tech base and there was an uh, old, frigid, evil woman in the depths of hell with a very evil sounding voice who sounded perfect for Margaret Thatcher. Um, I think she did an amazing job of (laughs) capturing the essence of the Iron Lady, Um, but that was really cool that she got involved with the project and helped out. (laughs) Thatcher's Tech Base. When I had the idea to approach uh, Leela about doing the voice of Margaret Thatcher, like with all the other collaborators, it took quite a lot of time to explain what the hell I was trying to do. A lot of the time I was kind of nervous. I think people, I was worried that people were going to think there was something wrong with me or that I was doing something extreme. But every time I told someone, oh, it's a game about killing Margaret Thatcher in hell, they were always like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, I'd love to be involved. Um, and. Layla was the same, so when I explained it was a game about killing Margaret Thatcher, um, she sent me some lines straight away, pretty much. <laughs> she was like, uh, so helpful and uh, such a nice person as well, which it was the same of pretty much everyone who worked on this game about killing Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Thatcher's <tech base. laughs> Once the trailer dropped, it became immediately clear that a lot of people were delighted or disgusted by the idea of slaying a demonic Margaret Thatcher with her own Trident missiles. Lots of retweets and a handful of articles later, this mod, which was intended to be a bit of a laugh between friends, now had a lot of eyes on it, including John Romero's, who shared an article about it on Twitter. I didn't think it would be important enough to be controversial. Like, I think it was supposed to be a joke. When the trailer came out and people from Argentina were messaging me being like, this game rocks, I hate Margaret Thatcher, I can't wait to play it. I started to get very nervous. (laughs) I started to get very worried because it was like a joke that had just spiraled completely out of control. September 24th, 2021. A year after mycoolmap01.wad became Thatcher's techbase.wad, it was finally time to launch the game. An hour before release, Jim's mail arrived. Tell me as much as you legally can about the tenant situation. Well, I don't know, maybe to speak to him. my lawyers about it first, but there was a joke in the game where you would be standing at a table having a couple of cans, first thing as the Glaswegian that came to mind was Tenant Slagger, so put some cans of Tenant Slagger right at the start. Because they featured in the trailer for only like a second or two, it turns out it got the attention of Tenant Slagger. And I didn't know anything about that for a week or so, but on the day uh, Thatcher's Tech Base was coming out and I was literally about half an hour away from pressing the button, got a letter that basically said, Dear Dr. Doom Daddy, we need you to stop featuring Tenant Slagger in Thatcher's Tech Base because it's a violation of copyright, which it technically wasn't, apparently. It was 
covered under parody law and stuff like that, but I basically worked out something with tenants where they offered to donate money to some charities in the local area in exchange for me taking tenant slagger out. So it's been replaced with uh, Fenif slagger, which is a completely unrelated brand, blue and green colour and Fenance is in no way associated with uh, the Tenant Slagger company, um, just for the record. Um. <laughs> they dragged their heels as long as they could, but Fenance Larger, sorry, Fenance Larger, Tenants Larger eventually did hold up their end of the deal and donated £2,000 to local charities. As a result, the existence of this satirical Doom mod officially became a net positive for the world. In the days that followed the game's release, many people enjoy it, or don't because they're stuck in a maze, and Jim fixes some bugs. But with all the attention Thatcher's tech base had received, it was only a matter of time before the bright lights of Terrestrial Television's online content division came calling. Tell me as much as you legally can about the <laughs> Why? game. Why does every question begin with as much as you legally can? Tell me as much as you legally can about the Games Master situation. Oh, um, have you heard of Trevor McDonald's review of all things? In the 90s, the number one show about video games on British TV was Games Master. In 2021, Channel 4 decided to revive Games Master as a part of their Remember That lineup. To modernise the show, they released it on E4's YouTube channel instead of on television, only made three episodes, and replaced the previous host, Dominic Diamond, with Trevor McDonald. Channel 4 wanted to bring Jim onto the show to talk about Thatcher's tech base, but there were two problems. Firstly, Trevor McDonald had only recently started a, now deleted, YouTube channel called Trevor McDonald's Review of All Things, which some considered a rather shameless ripping off of the Infinite Review. Personally, I didn't mind because it was actually kind of nice to see someone who is supposedly famous launch a YouTube channel which is basically the same as mine, but somehow managed to get viewing figures significantly lower than my already, shall we say, modest numbers. Knowing this, Jim planned to appear on the show sporting an Infinite Review t-shirt that he made himself, as a small thumb in the eye to Trevor. I knew nothing of this plan, but I do wish it had come to be. Unfortunately, that brings us to the second problem. Two weeks after Jim agreed to showcase Thatcher's tech base on Games Master, a Conservative MP in the real world is stabbed multiple times at a constituency meeting and dies at the scene. Channel 4 call Jim and tell him Thatcher's tech base might not be the right fit for Games Master after all. Jim's invitation to London evaporates. Neither he or his t-shirt would appear on the programme. But the game did, sort of. It was blurred out in the background of a sketch that was really more about Trevor showing off that he knows a Scottish wrestler than about the game. Also, they say they used a chainsaw, which can't be true as there's no chainsaw in Thatcher's tech base because it was replaced with a piss stream, which players could use how they saw fit. There's a misconception that you could kill Margaret Thatcher with a chainsaw. Uh, that's not true at all. Do you feel Trevor McDonald let himself down there? Do you think that's a lack of integrity? On his I mean, he was always known uh, for being a thorough journalist, but um, in this case, I think, yeah, he's let himself down by spreading false information on the internet. Slightly more honest journalism was happening over at Edge, where they continued to make amends for their original Doom review. They spoke to Jim about the mod, and he explained how Tim Rogers had been the one to convince him to make a mod in the first place. Now that Edge magazine has quoted the IRA in print, all we need to bring the Thatcher's tech base story to a nice full circle conclusion is for Tim Rogers to acknowledge its existence. Hello, Owen. Tim Rogers here, offering you the permission to tell Jim that I acknowledge the existence of Thatcher's tech base. Thank you, Tim. Refreshingly succinct. Also, the story isn't over yet. I told you, demons don't stay dead. In August 2022, Jim was approached by a political festival called The World Transformed. 
Their pitch was to create an arcade machine for Thatcher's tech base and use it to raise money for charity. Jim knew the mod wasn't really designed for arcade play, but agreed because, well, when someone is offering to make an arcade machine for your Doom mod about sending a cyber demonic Thatcher back to hell, you say yes. Oh, and it's for charity and would help those in need, etc. So Jim began working on a new version of the game, more suited for the arcade. When a workshop in Liverpool heard about the project, they immediately offered to provide the materials and labour needed to construct the arcade cabinet free of charge. Maggie herself never could have foreseen her policies leading to such heartwarming community spirit. A month later, the cabinet was completed. Jim travelled to Liverpool for the festival and to put his new arcade edition of the mod into the box. The cabinet was unveiled and enjoyed by many, including a visitor from the Labour Party conference which was happening next door. That visitor was former Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn. You're all doomed. For those outside the UK, I should explain who this is. Jeremy Corbyn is a British politician who tried to be nice which resulted in the media, the opposition, and even his own party, destroying him. A message had to be sent. Nobody in British politics will ever dare to make that mistake again. But since he still hasn't paid enough for his transgressions, it didn't take long for the British press to catch wind of these images. Shortly thereafter, articles began appearing in the mainstream news cycle, including the Express and Daily Mail, where the comment sections act like a toilet that fires waste into your home instead of taking it away. Jeremy came up and was like, oh, so it's a Doom 2 wad. Yeah, I'm familiar with the game. Don't think I've seen a better speedrun of Thatcher's type base in my life. He was, like, incredible. Um, I'd heard rumours that he played Quake and Unreal back in the day, but his Doom skills were next level. He was absolutely slicing up that level and he killed Margaret Thatcher and Cyber Thatcher in record time. Every two-bit chancer with a political blog was now contacting Jim for a comment on the Corbyn situation. He was even invited on to Good Morning Britain, which he wisely declined. For those who aren't familiar with Good Morning Britain, it's a light magazine-style breakfast show that Paul Verhoeven would cut from a movie for being a little too on the nose. It welcomes you with a smile and then headlocks you until you tap out by saying Churchill was the greatest Briton. It's fine for me. I don't have to take any of the heat. I didn't ask to get, you know, I didn't have to appear on British Breakfast TV or get asked to appear on British Breakfast TV. But to be killed uh, on modern yeah. television. I, like the, the Piers Morgan firing squad that never had to deal with that. Suddenly, Thatcher's tech base was news. And when you're news in the UK, that can mean only one thing. The BBC needs to bring you up on one of its many very funny and important comedy panel shows which take a <laughs> sideways glance at the prior week's events. The punchlines behind the headlines. Jim wasn't hugely enthusiastic about giving the BBC permission to use the photos he'd taken at the World Transformed event, but he relented in exchange for some further donations to charity. The mod was still helping those who needed it. Tell us as much as you legally can about the Have I Got News For You situation. I think some of these uh, journalists and uh, press people have like the same contacts because people were like, oh, I got your number from this person and I got your number from this person. But I got called one day uh, by people from the BBC initially for um, Mock the Week, which would have been a great honour. They basically asked me to sign a disclaimer um, saying that they could use photographs of Jeremy Corbyn standing next to an arcade machine uh, for Mock the Week, Have I Got News For You and some other stuff. Then on the 30th of September 2022, on the show you thought they must have stopped making 10 years ago, in front of an audience of 4 million centrist fathers in their 60s, Alexander Armstrong said the words, Thatcher's tech base. <laughs> What was Jeremy Corbyn seen doing at the weekend in Liverpool? He was on a, uh, a game. Yes, he was. Uh, uh, was it like Kill Margaret Thatcher or something? It was a video game <laughs> called... No, it was. Thatcher's Tech Base. Yes. According to the Mail, the game features a demonic version of Margaret Thatcher. There's a demonic version. <laughs> it's called Liz. <laughs> uh, very weird, because even... Mum and Dad saw that on TV <laughs> and had a lot of questions about what the hell 
Thatcher State Base was doing in an arcade machine next to Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> and there you go. The unusual journey of a Doom mod that went all the way from personal joke to national news. It might seem ridiculous that things went as far as they did, but when you keep in mind that the current Prime Minister equates anti-British sentiment with terrorism, it's clear that a lot of people take something like this very seriously. Are you afraid that you may be bagged in the night and reprogrammed? <laughs> um, I've definitely had like some angry messages from people uh, basically saying that it's a really disrespectful game and that it's deeply hurtful to Margaret Thatcher and the Conservatives and British identity. But the classic reply is always, do you think Margaret Thatcher would be upset by this game? Or would she be bothered by this game? <laughs> Probably not. Um, it's just meant to be satirical fun. Anything you do in the game involving pissing and graves and burning down flags, um, that's the player's actions. I'm not responsible for what the player does in the game. Um, it's just a world for you to explore and enjoy. All the posters, all the billboards, all the artwork in the game uh, is all taken from the 1980s. It's all real graffiti. It's all real posters about vilifying gay people, reporting on your neighbours. It's all posters about why you don't deserve any money. None of that was fabricated for the game. Margaret Thatcher provided all that for me. Um, so I'm very grateful to her for that. And if there's anything you see in the game that offends you, it probably came from her. So. I would take up with Margaret Thatcher, maybe in the game. It may have been brief, but mainstream Doom controversy returned. Jim had achieved with Thatcher's tech base what Doom Eternal had not. The Doom Slayer was never invited on to Good Morning Britain to explain themselves. Or maybe he was, but he was too busy platforming poorly. But despite the mod's reputation in the papers, it was critiques of the game design from those who'd actually played it which weighed heavier on Jim's mind than any criticism of the political content. Yeah, I think the game itself isn't that good and I got a lot of feedback basically saying, maybe rightly, like, we don't deserve for this WOD to be as publicised as many, many, many great WODs made by other Doom developers. I think people saying it rode off political controversy were completely right. Um, it was absolutely gift wrapped for controversial news articles and blog posts and media opportunities and yeah I think the game itself isn't, isn't, a, ma <laughs> isn't a masterpiece by any stretch it's very hard it's very unfair um, it's not very well plotted it does borrow stuff from other games and just glue it on without much thought but that was the fun of the project and um, I wasn't looking to win a game award from Jeff Keighley I just wanted to make something about uh, Margaret Thatcher coming back from hell and <laughs> I think I managed to do that somewhat. Ultimately, Thatcher's tech base was a joke that made a lot of people laugh and a few people angry, but it helped to raise a lot of money for good causes. And for a satirical Doom mod in 2022, that ain't bad. It was a joke, but sometimes jokes can help people feel better and can help bring people together. The music was just fun and daft and easy to write. And yeah, and we got to do like raise money for charity and stuff which was amazing it's just we you know when i went into it i was like this is going to be a laugh but the fact it's actually done a bit of good is obviously amazing it was like a real privilege to work with some of the people um from the organizations who wanted to support thatcher stick base never intended for tenant slagger to give away thousands of pounds to charity because they didn't like the cyber thatcher but i'm glad they did and i think that's like a really positive consequence of making a stupid Doom mod <laughs> for your pals on Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, feel... <laughs> I was thinking of it there. I was like, oh, it's quite nice. <laughs> Tim Rogers here. Please tell Jim that I acknowledge the existence of Thatcher's tech base. That I acknowledge the existence of Thatcher's tech base. Alright, I'm done. I'm too much of a pro for my own good. Is it like how I tried to recreate the hairstyle from the Doom video? You want to know another behind-the-scenes secret? When I recorded that Doom video, I was wearing this jacket, these glasses, this t-shirt, 
and I was not wearing jeans. It was the only time in history I ever wore this jacket and a, a black t-shirt. This jacket period outside without jeans on. Um, usually it's always jeans down there. I was wearing a pair of uh, Nike running shorts because it was really hot in the studio. I like my Herman Miller back there. It's not bad, right? It's a real one. I, I didn't even get that. I didn't find out on the side of the street, if you know what I mean. I'm sweating so much. I'm sweating, Charlie. Uh, I'm sweating. Um, you know, I played Thatcher's tech bass. I actually played the whole thing. Um, I had a really good time. Um, kind of wish I could talk to those creatures a little bit more, though. Um, if you know what I mean. Uh, 